David, from Tuesday night, still angry, still frustrated? I'm not angry, I'm frustrated. I think words, um, uh, I mean, many people have rung me and asked me, pre other managers have rung me and asked me a certain, you know, or not asked me, they've given me their, <laughs> their thoughts on them, uh, certain things that happened in that game. Um, an amazing, an amazing uh, game in many respects. Um, certainly, the p wrong person got the headlines. Wrong person got the headlines, and in the end, the wrong result for your side. I'm not going to mo moan about the result. You know that Luton they won the game. We won the game against York with ten men, and we were very humble and, and dignified about the way we went about it. Um, Luton uh, are a good side. But I think the consequences, when your players are scared to make a challenge and scared to, uh, uh, for attempt to ball in fear of being sent off, then I understand some of the actions of my players. Um, the goals uh, that we conceded, I think the emotion got to my players, certainly. But that's understandable. It's a, it's a nice little club, Luton. Um, and certainly the fans, they're good fans. They get behind their team and you have to be able to deal with that. But there was one person that, that couldn't deal with it. If you had it been allowed to play on, shall we say, a level playing field, do you feel your side would have competed man for man with the yeah. side? I didn't feel under any threat whatsoever, really. They had one shot, I think it was one shot and a couple of corners in the first half. We felt very confident going into the game second half. We, I mean, we said prior to the debacle, um, uh, we were very confident coming out and you know bringing on perhaps the pace that would have... Um, you know, it's hypothetical now. but. Um, we didn't feel under any threat, they had one shot, we had probably the uh, just as good a chance with Christmas for his, his uh, header. It wasn't to be and um, I say that the game, when your players are scared to make challenges, uh, what can you do? The, the referee took centre stage and um, unfortunately uh, we, we paid the price for it in many, many ways. David, just talk to me about the incident which saw your dismissal from the game. Um, I questioned what the fourth official whether I can ask speak to the referee, uh, finding out why one player was singled out, or two players singled out in a 16 man melee as they call it. I call it handbags, but um, emotions are running high. We just saved, our goalkeeper just saved two fantastic penalties, cleared the ball. Um, the altercation that uh, came prior, uh, sorry, after that was nothing really. And yet you find one player sent off uh, for two ridiculous um, decisions. And I asked about it. Um, I'm in target to. I've got to defend my players, and I will defend my players. I think that that's the most important thing to be said. We were seen to be some of the, the, the decisions on the night were, were incred incredible. So you refute any allegation that David that you used threatening or abusive language towards the fourth official or the referee? Threatening language, David. Um, I certainly didn't threaten the man. He, his mannerisms were: um, you're in a territory, you're in a hot pot. Um, I've been in the game long enough to know what's right and wrong, and certainly. Um, the decisions that are going against us, um, I will react to them because I have to look after my players. You act in a professional manner, but likewise, um, the territory we're working is certainly, uh, you know, you, your emotions are going to run high, you have to control them. But the fourth official seemed um, in the wrong place. Columnists and bloggers will no doubt, well, some will no doubt label you as losing control of the situation. Would you, would you, <laughs> Me? Would you agree with that, David? <laughs> No, I wouldn't. I think mean, someone lost control of it. No, um, I think that they took the attention onto the referee even more so. If the fourth official had done his job properly, he'd have calmed it down, and he, he wouldn't have said what he said because in, even in the report he got the words wrong, completely wrong. And um, uh, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. What about this incident moving forward? Are you expecting a fine or a ban now from the FA? Yeah, I, I'll accept the. Um, I've, I don't wish to. I must say that I don't wish to because my actions weren't inaccurate. The, um, I don't like it, I certainly don't like it, and I don't, um, but I have to live with it because these appeals, um, I think we have to move on with it to be honest and put it behind us, so I'll have to accept a, a ban. I've spoken to the chief executive of the football club this morning and we reluctantly will accept it, I, I, I'll say that, because it's undeserved. I think um, the officials for their actions and the, and the game, um, whether it be that game, what I say is that there's some referees in, in, in who, who can referee at certain levels and certainly some that can't and when you've got a high profile match, certainly as um, the game was, um, some referees can do it very well. Howard Webb is a fantastic referee and he's, he's taken charge of high profile games and, and dealt with them but certainly um, on the other night I found some of the decisions interesting and I think any manager 
any manager worth his sorts would certainly um, uh, not condone the, the decisions that went against us. It's been a sticking point all season, not just for Mansfield Town, but for arguably Blue Square Prem clubs across the league. The fact that there's a, maybe an inconsistency in refereeing levels. Will you agree with that analysis? Well, the first tackle, the first tackle, uh, Kevin Sandler's tackle, is a clear tackle. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you see that by the reaction of Richard Money and his staff. They don't get up. It's a clearly fought tackle, a 50-50 ball, which the boy goes into, doesn't raise his foot, clearly wins the ball. The ball goes in the right direction as the defender's attacking it. Nothing wrong with it. But yet he started the game on a bad note and give a, a booking for a tackle that was similar to probably 75% of every other tackle in the match. In terms of where this leaves your changing room in the minutes, obviously there will be a lot of bitterly disappointed and angry, frustrated faces in that changing room on Tuesday night. Has it been a case of picking the lads up this week? Um, I'm picking them up because they, they, don't, they haven't gone out and played badly. They've got beaten. I mean, the second half they were scared to make challenges because they were in fear of being sent off. Some of the bookings were justified. I've got no problem with that. Some of them were. Gary Mills deserved to be booked. Gary Silk deserved to be booked. Luke Medley's one is a disgrace. It's shocking. It's, an, it's a terrible decision. Um, but the referee's there. His inter interpretation was um, certainly questionable. Chance to make amends, arguably, this weekend. I don't think your side maybe has to make amends. That was a wrong phrase there. But just in terms of the game against Gateshead, a tough place to go. Well, we judge it on its own merits. Um, it's obviously, we're, we're without our captain um, because of the debacle on Tuesday night. Um, and and Fozzie will be missed because he's been uh, an inspiration to the players. He's been very good. Um, and we're going there without a player because of um, repercussions and of an, of an appalling performance. Sadly, um, have to try to overcome that. But we'll go there. The boys are, you know, they don't like being beaten. We're great, great um, togetherness in the squad. And even afterwards, they knew that they'd been um, wrongly done by them. But you moved down. We were in Wednesday morning. The boys have rested yesterday. So they're bright and breezy this morning. We've spoken to um, players. And, we have to, I have to deal with the consequences of that and we have to do it, get our mind focused on the, on the game on Saturday. You mentioned Steve Foster missing from the game because of his red card. Tom there, let's have to come in then? Yes, Tom will play. Um, Tom will certainly uh, play a part. It's um, a great game for the boy to go into. And again, you, you know, fans want you to bring a, a local boy in. We hope that Tom can uh, step up. I'm sure he's uh, looking forward to it. He's trained with the first team, um, and certainly we're looking forward to giving him his, uh, his game. He's a cracking lad. Only time will tell. We, we have to, you know, how do you, how do you go about it? Giving him opportunities, you have to do him an opportunity some time. He's had to buy his time this season because of the settled back four that you, you picked consistently. Do you think you're maybe going to have to, shall we say, curb his youthful impatience, impatience next time on, uh, on Saturday to make sure he doesn't try and fly out of blocks too early? Well, again, that comes with um, youth and comes with inexperience. But how do you get experience? You have to be in there too. I, I started my career off early age and you do make mistakes and he won't um, be uh, vilified for any mistakes he makes. He's a young man and that's what we have to deal with. We, we want you to give Tom the opportunity and uh, he'll get it. And, um, I'm sure the fans will be very forgiving for any young player that we, that we bring through. But, it's in a position where you know, you've got to make sure you're just doing the basics right. What have you made of Gateshead so far this season? They, they escaped relegation last year. What's their form like this year in your life? Yeah, decent. They've won I mean, the last two games and he's, he's brought in some decent players there is uh, Ian and um, they've been able to. They've gone full-time football now, which is obviously um, relevant to fitness level. So um, they've got no excuse in that, uh, that, that area. Um, and and they'll, be, they'll be wanting to challenge um, for a playoff spot without a doubt because They've brought in some very talented players and uh, I'm sure that their expectancy level, just like everybody else's, is, is quite high. What about the rest of your squad, injury-wise, fitness-wise? No, no, we've got a clean bill of health and uh, I'm very pleased with that. Um, again, uh, coming out of a game, we look back at this game, this ridiculous game where there was eight bookings and not one band challenge in the game. I find that amazing. No injuries, no player left the field with injuries, but eight bookings and uh, sending off. In terms of your band, David, will this start for the game against Gator? Yeah, I think that will be imposed uh, tomorrow, so um, obviously uh, we'll have to deal with that uh, accordingly.